Aloha everybody and welcome back to the channel today. I'm giving you a Q&A. I am answering as many of your questions as I can about Aulani, Disney's Vacation Club property on Oahu. I'm super excited you guys submitted fantastic questions and we are just gonna dive right in. I have my little cheat sheet in front of me with all of your questions. I guess you wouldn't have expected me to memorize all of your questions. That would be dumb. Um, and I really loved the questions that you guys sent in. A lot of them were repeats around a similar theme. So if I didn't get to your individual specific question, hopefully what I'm going to share um, is going to be maybe close to what you wanted to know about. Uh, we spent a week at Olani, so I do feel like I have, I don't know, a, a better understanding of it than maybe if someone only went for a couple of days. Uh, we loved our time there. I encourage you to go check out both of my other videos that I've done so far. Also, thank you to everybody who's been so supportive of the different formatting on those videos. As I move forward with the channel, I'll still continue to do traditional trip vlogs, but when we go to destinations where like a day-to-day -day trip vlog might not be as helpful as more detailed information, places like Hawaii. Um, I've got uh, some really exciting destinations coming up in 2023 that you're going to want to be here for. Let's dive right into the questions. This first one I feel like really um, is important and kind of foundational to how to approach visiting a Disney resort in Hawaii. Okay, so here's the question. Aulani has never attracted me as a vacation destination, but more as a stop in Hawaii because it doesn't seem like the resort warrants having enough to do for a long stay. Did you ever find yourself bored or wishing there was more to do than sit on the beach? I love relaxing like anyone would, but only for so long. So what's ironic is we did not really have, I mean, we were only at the beach for at Aulani for maybe an hour tops per day. Maybe one day we did two hours, but we used Alani as a stopping off point. So as opposed to someone who might say, I'm going to go to Hawaii specifically to visit Disney's resort. We're Disney Vacation Club members who had points that we were able to use at Alani. So that's where we chose to stay while we were visiting Oahu. We did all kinds of things. And I'm going to get into more of that in a little while because a lot of you asked about, you know, what, what there is to do in the surrounding area. But we were at beaches all over Oahu. We were on the North Shore. We, we were surfing. We were boogie boarding. We were snorkeling. Uh, we were not just sitting on the beach. I would say if, if you want a sitting on the beach type of vacation, I probably wouldn't go to Hawaii at all. I mean, I love Hawaii, but I feel like there's so many places all over the world where you can just sit on a beach. Um, and, I, and I wouldn't want to go all the way there, especially if you live on the East Coast like we do and do the same things that I might do, you know, in Destin or Vero Beach. I wanted to be in Hawaii to do Hawaiian things. I wanted to learn about the culture. I wanted to hike. I wanted to do all of that. And we were easily able to do all that from our, you know, kind of home base of Alani. So I hope that answers your question. I mean, if you want to just sit on the beach there, you totally can. But we had a car, we did all kinds of different things. There are excursions you can do. There are so many different tours in the area that you can either book through Alani or you can book on your own. And I, I don't, I think there might be a misperception of how most people, I, I think there are some people that use it just as a resort vacation. That is not how we used it. And we had plenty to do on Oahu. Oahu is a very busy place and there is no shortage of activities. Um, and then this question kind of builds on that first one. Do you think Elani is a good jumping off point for exploring the island of Oahu? How far are the popular tourist sites from the resort if you are driving and what else did you do? So um, the kind of big things that we did were the North Shore we did twice. We had two separate days where we drove over there both to go to beaches. Um, we went to Lanakai Beach, which is actually not technically North Shore. It's more on the east side, I believe, if I'm getting my geography right. Uh, we hiked Diamond Head. We did the Pearl Harbor um, memorial, memorial. We did the USS Arizona. 
amazing experience, highly recommend it. Um, as far as um, how far things are, we usually would allow, you know, 30 minutes to get to different places on the island. I'm trying to think, other than when we went all the way to the farthest side of the North Shore, which was probably 45 minutes, unless you're stuck in traffic, everything is hour or under. Now, that's a big caveat, unless you're stuck in traffic, okay? Because there are certain times of day that the traffic is horrific. So the the issue with where Elani is, is you've got the island of Oahu and then you've got, um, Elani is down here on the western shore. So actually, I think, mm, am I getting that wrong? It's I think it's down here. Yeah, it's over here. <laughs> so if you're looking at a map at Oahu, Elani is over here. I'll actually put up a picture of a map of Oahu right now so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. So in order to get over to the North Shore, you have to get on, I think it's, is it M3? You have to get on a, a different highway that takes you right smack dab through the middle of Honolulu traffic. If you happen to hit that during rush hour, either going up to the North Shore in the morning or trying to come back to Alani from like four o'clock to six o'clock at night, you're gonna sit in traffic. It, it is, it's like Atlanta level traffic. And if you've ever been to Atlanta, when I say Atlanta level traffic, you know what I'm talking about. So because of that reason, if you plan on spending a lot of time on the North Shore, you might wanna consider doing a split stay where you're staying a few days over in the Alani area, and then you're staying a few days over on the North Shore. As far as the things that are in and around Honolulu, so that's gonna be Diamond Head and um, uh, Pearl Harbor, if you're us, we actually didn't do Waikiki or any of that, then Alani is fine. You're talking under 30 minutes to get to those destinations. Um, but it, it is, keep in mind, you, you've, you're dealing with freeways. And so you're gonna have traffic. If you're someone who doesn't like to be stuck in traffic or doesn't like to have to worry about traffic on vacation, then this may not be the best spot for you because right around the resort itself, there really is just beaches and snorkeling and touristy restaurants. Koalina does not have really a whole bunch of other things to do. There's there's a little dinky water park nearby. There's the train, which looked really quaint. But um, yeah, if, if you're not, um, if you're not someone who wants to drive to things on vacation, it might be problematic. But I mean, it, you got, it's all about perspective, right? Because if you're doing a Walt Disney World vacation and you're staying at Old Key West, it could take you an hour to get to you know the Magic Kingdom. So <laughs> keep that in mind. It's all about perspective. And I really feel like a car is essential when you're there. Um, it, at least it was for us and the way that we wanted to vacation. Um, other things we did um, on Oahu, uh, Scott did two days of private surfing lessons. Um, a wonderful guy named Danny. Um, I, it's called West Side Surfing. I will put them down in the description box if you wanna reach out to him. Um, Native Hawaiian, great guy, super fun, great instructor. Um, there were actually some kids that he was working with um, when Scott was out there, great with kids. And he does all of his surf lessons uh, just to the west slightly of Alani. It's about 15 minutes away. So that's a great option, I think, if you're at Alani. Scott wanted to see places where Magnum PI was filmed. So he had found online, we did this little tour of like where Robin's Nest was. It's not there anymore, but that was kind of hilarious. And like the baseball field where they filmed episodes and don't ask me why we needed to do that, but we did. Um, of course, there are so many, there are helicopter tours. There's that ranch where they filmed Jurassic Park. Everybody loves that tour. Um, there's zip lining, there's tons of, um, you know, guided hiking expeditions. I mean, it is, there are tons of things to do. We kind of had like one activity out of the resort that we did every single day, except for one where we just sort of stayed around the resort. Um, but we, we were busy all week. In fact, if I had to do it over again, I might have chosen to do two days just hanging around at Alani instead of we only really did one. Um, and then we were there most evenings and we were on the beach in the evenings and things like that. But um, yeah, there, you're, you're gonna find plenty to do. And there are so many, so many great YouTube videos about the best things to do on Oahu. I am by no means an expert on that. I've only been a couple of times. Um, mostly my 
uh, travels in Hawaii have been to Kauai. That's where I went as a kid. That's where Scott and I went on our honeymoon. That's where I was um, a few years ago. I took my sons out there. So um, I don't, I'm not an expert on Oahu, but there are plenty of people who are. So I'll try to see if I can find some good uh, travel vlogs for you guys about Oahu in particular. And I'll put those uh, down in the description box because I think you might find those really, really helpful. Um, do you think it is worth it to have a few resort days built in while traveling with Littles? Is there enough to do just at the resort? So I want to uh, kind of respond to this in a yes, there is, but I don't have much experience with those activities. There were loads of kids activities scheduled while we were there. One thing I would suggest is uh, go online and kind of check the daily activity boards. They, they're, they're everywhere. You can find it really easily if you just put like Alani daily activities into Google, uh, but it would load on the app and there would be character meet and greets, there would be craft times, there would be storytelling. They did a stargazing thing at night that we had heard really great things about. There was live performances in the lobby. There were um, cooking demonstrations. There, of course, is the luau. There's a kids club. So they definitely have a full docket of resort activities. And I know during COVID they had cut back on that quite a bit, but that is now all back full steam ahead. There's also, of course, all the pool areas and then there's rentals available and there's, there's just a lot. There's plenty to do for a family uh, to spend. I would say, and I'm gonna answer this question in a little while, but I would say at least two or three days if you had little kiddos, um, you could just enjoy the resort itself. Did you take advantage of the shops and restaurants across the street from the resort? And what are your thoughts on that little shopping center? So yes, of course, we were over there pretty much every day. We ate at the Mexican restaurant over there and I will put the name right here because I don't remember the name of it, but it was really, really good. We of course ate at Monkey Pod Kitchen, which is one of our favorites. We loved it there. Uh, we were at the ABC Market quite a bit, although, the ABC Market, um, which is not called ABC Market, it's called something else, but it is an ABC Market. That's like a chain there um, in Hawaii. The selection was not great. Um, they had a great selection of like deli food and, and things like that. So if you wanted to get like quick service food, they had, they had that in spades, but um, the grocery selection was really limited. We went to the Target, which is only one exit away, it was really easy to get to. There's a Costco there, there's a Target there. Um, I don't, was there a Walmart? Maybe there was a Walmart, but there's plenty of grocery options over there. There's also um, like some really fun beachwear shops. I did some shopping over there, more locally owned stores are over there. Um, we, we thought it was charming and delightful. You'll find little shopping centers like that. Um, there's pretty much every major resort I feel like in Hawaii that's out of a city has a little shopping area like that across the street and it's fun and it usually has pretty good offerings because you know you know you know the rent there has to be really really high so they're gonna have to make a lot of money to to justify that and people won't go back year after year if it's not good so we had really good luck with all of the places over there. So I would highly recommend them. Would you still recommend someone going to this resort without DVC? So this is a tough one. Um, I loved the immersion of um, Hawaiian storytelling that is there. I think they did such a fabulous job with that, but it is so absurdly expensive. And I feel like you could just as easily stay in a condo and maybe take your family to the Polynesian Cultural Center or do, you know, tour the palace or, or do some of those other cultural things on your own for much less money. Um, I personally, if I were paying cash and was not a DVC member, would not stay here. Um, there's actually a Marriott right next door that I've also stayed at that is quite a bit cheaper. And um, I actually, I mean, as far as like resort amenities and stuff, it's absolutely on par with the Disney Resort. It doesn't quite have the Hawaiian cultural influence. Um, but if I were paying cash, I probably would not choose Koalina at all. Um, and that is because, and, and someone had asked me about this, like if it felt less beachy because it was a man-made cove, yeah, it kind of does. I mean, if I were to pay cash and go to visit Oahu, I most likely would rent a house on Lanakai Beach and pay about the same as you would pay at Alani, and you're on Lanakai Beach, which is one of the most beautiful beach destinations 
in the world. You can walk the beach for a very long time, which you cannot do at Olani. Um, it's just it's just a very, very, very different feeling over there. And if I were paying, I mean, the room we stayed in, the rack rate on that is like $700 a night. So for our six nights, that would have been $4,200. No, I would not spend that to stay there. If you didn't have a discount, if you couldn't rent DVC points, or if you aren't like us and you already had DVC points, um, yeah, I personally, I mean, I loved it. I, I'm thrilled that we went. We'll probably be back someday. But if I were paying cash, I would not stay there. Uh, someone asked what room to pick. Pricing changes so much by view. Yeah, it really, really does. I have only ever seen the ocean view, but I can tell you that we had a um, mountain view when we stayed at the Marriott. And because it's in the exact same area um, and your mountain view would be the same, I think the mountain view is every bit as beautiful as the ocean view in its own way. So obviously there's nothing that, that can beat the ocean, but you can just so quickly and easily walk out to the ocean to look at it. And that whole area is just so pretty. I think you should stay at the cheapest view. I really do. I, I just think you're not going to spend a lot of time in your room. We ended up spending more time in our room than we had intended because we could hear the live entertainment from the evening and we could see the sunset from our balcony. But we would have been just as happy if that were not the case. So I think save your money. I think book the cheapest category that's available and you can still get the full Elani experience. For me, I just don't think, unless it's like for a honeymoon or something, that that ocean view is really that important and worth the money. I had a lot of questions about dining. Um, and, and if you were one of the people that asked a, a question about dining in the resort itself, go back and watch the video that I did because I really did a full um, review of, of everywhere that we ate. Uh, and But everyone was thinking that food was really expensive. So. It, unless I'm wrong, and I'm not an economics professor, okay, it seems to me like the food was not that much more expensive than what we we're used to paying at resorts all over the world. Um, and even like, you know, Disney World food prices have gone up so much. I did not experience that sticker shock that I had the first time that I went there as a paying adult, which was way back in 1990. Um, even the Target, the prices seemed more on par with what I pay here at home. So I would say there was maybe like a 15% increase, but nothing shockingly bad. Like the yogurt that I buy here at home, I bought at Target. I, I, I didn't compare prices to prices that I probably should have, and I'm sure there's a better online resource than Jen's intuition, but um, I just felt like the food was kind of as expensive as food is everywhere, which is too expensive, but that's <laughs> that just is what it is. We saved a lot of money on food, which we would have done no matter where we were vacationing, by buying you know yogurt and bagels and things um, and fruit to have in the room. And then we only ate out, we usually would do like a light lunch and then we would eat dinner out or we would eat dinner or we would eat lunch out and then we would have just like a light, quick dinner. Um, that kind of helped the bottom line. If you're going to eat three meals a day at a table service restaurant at Olani, you're going to spend a fortune on food. So I would definitely try to mitigate that a little bit. I mean, that's one of the benefits of staying in a timeshare property, whether that's the Marriott property or the Disney property or renting a condo, is that you can get, like if your kids love peanut butter and jelly, you can buy bread and do PB&Js. You can, um, when we were at the Marriott a few years ago, I actually went to the Costco and I bought the salmon um, that comes like just ready to, to cook. I don't know if you guys have had that with the dollops of butter on top and see or salad and um, a loaf of bread and the boys were laughing they were like this is just like what we eat at home I'm like that's exactly right just like we eat at home and just as cheap as when we make it at home so if you can if you have some sort of kitchen and you can do some cooking and you could you know work into your schedule a trip to Costco or Target that will help a lot with your food bill especially if you're traveling with a family and had we been traveling with everyone that is 100 percent what i would have done when it's just scott and i neither of us are huge eaters neither, neither of us i mean we, we can get by without eating a lot so one big meal a day is really sufficient for us and then having snacks and um, just you know lighter meals the rest of the time how many days do you need to get the aulani experience okay so I've kind of already touched on this. Um, I would say if you're gonna 
do Alani as kind of one piece of an overall Hawaiian vacation. Maybe you're you're going to other islands, maybe you're spending time on the North Shore. I think three days is probably good rule of thumb. Um, with little ones, I don't really like staying anywhere less than three nights, just because it's a lot of upheaval for them. So if I had little ones, I would definitely do a minimum of three nights there. Um, if you're um, grown-ups, you probably could just do two nights there, uh, but you definitely want to get a, a real feel for the whole place. And um, so I, I would think two to three nights would be the minimum amount of time I would want to go. Oh, this was a good one. Does it matter where you stay within the resort? I don't think so. It's, it's a very compact resort. There's two main tower buildings. Nothing is very far walking distance. So unless I'm missing something and feel free to comment below if I am, I don't think you can have a bad location. I think all of the locations are equally um, close to all of the things, especially because if you've seen the pictures, you've got the two towers and then you've got the lobby where the restaurants are is like in the middle. So both towers are close and they really chose to build up with Alani. So yeah, I think anywhere is fine. And then that same person asked, would it be fun to go with a group of singles, no kids? I mean, I think it's great for adults. Uh, we loved, you know, Off the Hook is really a glorified bar and we loved being there. The evening entertainment is great. Uh, I think going there with a group of friends could be fantastic. The only time that kids, um, and I and Scott and I have no problem being around kids. We feel that way everywhere we go. We're fine with that in public. We're fine with that Disney Cruise Line. Um, we're people who happen to believe that, you know, all of us were kids once and we enjoy the energy that kids bring to a situation. Having said that, um, there were some times in the pool area that I was like, I can't take this. So having the beach, having other areas to escape to, I would not hesitate to go here with friends. I certainly wouldn't hesitate if I was trying to plan like a girl's trip and we were all gonna meet out there. Oh my gosh, ideally suited for that. Just because the customer service, the quality of the restaurants, everything being right there, um, you could have fun. You wouldn't have to worry about anybody driving if you were you know, eating it, just, just all of the things. I think it's a great resort um, for families for singles, for couples, the, the whole thing. Multi-generational trips, we saw a lot of that going on. I think it's, that's a great thing to do, especially since if you've got a car available, people who wanna go out and explore the rest of Oahu can, and people who wanna stick closer to the resort can do that. So yeah, I absolutely loved it. So then the big question, and I'll, I'll end with this and then have some final thoughts. Do you think this resort is worth the splurge? If you are a DVC owner and you are staying on points, 100% you should make a trip to Alani. If you are paying cash and you can get a great discount, you should go to Alani. If you can rent points from someone, you should go to Alani. I loved it there. I would not pay rack rate for this resort. I think there are many other options in the Hawaiian Islands. For my money, if I was gonna do a big Hawaiian vacation, Oahu would not even be the island that I would pick. I would probably choose Maui or Kauai just because of the way that we like to vacation and what we like to do. Oahu is a very, very, very crowded place. So if you can go in understanding that, if you want to learn about Hawaiian culture, if you wanna go in with you know a mind towards conservation, being aware of the native Hawaiians and, and, and all of those kinds of things. I think this can be a fantastic option for your family vacation, but it's very difficult for me to say if it's worth the splurge because all things being equal, um, I do think it is very expensive for what you get and that there are other places within Hawaii where you could get as good, if not a slightly better experience for less money. So that's, that's kind of a maybe is my answer to that. Also keep in mind, and I wanna use this kind of as my final thoughts. Um, this is not a theme park destination. Um, you know, Hawaii is not a theme park. Hawaii is a place with people who live and work there. It is a struggling economy in many ways. Um, Oahu in particular has really had a hard time coming back from COVID. Go in with an understanding that you're not just gonna take try to learn, try to learn a little bit about the culture, about some of the frustrations that the people of Hawaii have faced with development and with um, conservation and with water shortages and things like that. 
and you know use it as an opportunity to educate yourself because I really think that's what travel should be about. If you want a theme park experience, I would say stick to Disney World and Disneyland. But if you're interested in becoming more of a world traveler and you want to have the Disney security of the customer service and, and just the quality assurance, then I think this is a fantastic option for you. I feel the same way about like Disneyland Paris and some other international destinations. Disney is great at making sure that they deliver on their promise of having good quality service, good quality accommodations, all of those things. But I think use it more as, you know, as Walt used travel, as a backdrop for learning all the new things, learning about different people and how they live. And um, yeah, I think if you go in with that attitude, you will have a fantastic vacation, whether you choose to be on Oahu and go to Alani or somewhere else in the Hawaiian Islands. And I just wish you happy travel. I wish you all of the joy in the world. This video is uh, going to be the last in my series. I had originally planned on also doing one about um, specific to all the things we did on Oahu, but I am just gonna run out of time. So I'm gonna try to, hopefully as I've talked, I've been able to put some great clips in of the things we did on Oahu. And like I said, I'm not an expert, so I don't want to pretend that I am one. There's so many great resources. So if that's really something that you want to do, I have no doubt you'll be able to find some smarter people than me <laughs> uh, to talk about what there is to do in Oahu itself. But um, yeah, whatever you're doing, I hope you're being really good to each other. I am actually headed down to Walt Disney World this next week. So when I get back, I will have a whole new set of trip vlogs all about heading down to Disney during the holidays. Take care, whatever you're doing. I hope you're being really good to each other and I'll see you next time. Bye.